Looking to invest in a world-class business at a discount? Want a market-beating yield growing at an accelerating rate? Like the idea of benefiting from strong demographic tailwinds? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. It helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a global biopharmaceutical company that's providing people with the life-saving and life-improving drugs they need. A lot of expenses in life are discretionary in nature. You can survive without a luxury car. You don't need a latte in the morning. But healthcare? Healthcare is often a non-negotiable expense. Companies that provide the necessary and non-negotiable healthcare products and or services tend to profit big time. And that naturally leads to big growing dividends. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. Best of all, the stock looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I wanna share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Bristol Myers Squibb Co., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Bristol Myers Squibb Co. stock ticker BMY is a global biopharmaceutical company that is engaged in discovering, developing, and delivering a range of medicines to help people overcome serious diseases. Founded in 1887, Bristol Myers Squibb is now a $146 billion by market cap healthcare behemoth that employs 30,000 people. The company focuses on oncology, cardiovascular, and immunology treatments. Three primary drugs together accounted for almost 70% of sales, Revlimid, Optivo, and Eliquis. Eliquis is jointly developed and commercialized with Pfizer Inc. A global biopharmaceutical company like Bristol Myers Squibb presents the investor with a compelling investment case. The world is growing bigger, older, and richer simultaneously. A larger pool of older and wealthier people naturally means more demand for, as well as access to, quality healthcare products and services, including medicine. And since healthcare is usually a non-discretionary expense, demand for quality drugs tends to be fairly inelastic. Already positioned favorably by these demographic tailwinds, the company further bolstered its competitive position by acquiring rival Celgene Corporation for $74 billion in late 2019. This greatly expanded and diversified its drug portfolio, adding key blockbuster cancer drug Revlimid to the sales mix. Revlimid produced more than $12 billion in sales in 2020, which makes it one of the top selling drugs in the whole world. It's the crown jewel for the combined business. Bristol Myers Squibb now has even greater scale, which is a powerful competitive advantage in their space. This bodes well for the company's ability to increase its profit and dividend over the long run. Already, Bristol Myers Squibb has increased its dividend for 12 consecutive years. Their 10 year dividend growth rate of 3.5% is somewhat disappointing. This has historically dimmed my enthusiasm regarding the business. However, there's been a recent dividend growth acceleration. The last dividend increase was almost 9%. And that's the kind of growth that's appealing when paired with the stock's current yield of 3%. This market beating yield, by the way, is 20 basis points higher than the stock's own five-year average yield. With the payout ratio at 26.3% based on midpoint fiscal year 2021 non-GAAP earnings per share guidance, the dividend should continue to grow at this accelerated rate for the foreseeable future. I like dividend growth stocks in what I refer to as the sweet spot. That's a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with a high single digit or better dividend growth rate. With bigger dividend raises coming out of the business, the stock is now squarely in that sweet spot. 
Looking at business growth, Bristol-Myers Squibb grew its revenue from $21.244 billion in fiscal year 2011 to $42.518 billion in fiscal year 2020. That's a compound annual growth rate of 8.01%. Very impressive. However, much of this growth is due to the aforementioned Celgene acquisition. That acquisition resulted in a much larger float for the business with the outstanding share count exploding. The profit growth on a per share basis should give us better insight into the true growth profile. Earnings per share increased from $2.16 to $6.44 adjusted over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 12.91%. Even more impressive than the top line growth. It's important to note though that I did use adjusted earnings per share for fiscal year 2020 as the integration of the Celgene acquisition and one-time charges greatly skewed the gap earnings per share result for that fiscal year. Looking forward, CFRA is projecting that Bristol-Myers Squibb will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 10% over the next three years. CFRA cites a healthy pipeline and the strength of its marketed brands as key long-term tailwinds. Regarding the pipeline, there are more than 50 compounds in development. This healthy pipeline is necessary. Patents on Revlimid begin expiring in 2022 with unrestricted competition slated to begin in 2026. Seeing as how Revlimid is the company's biggest sales driver and most important drug, the patent cliff looms large. The development of successful drugs is critical to their long-term success. I see CFRA's near-term earnings per share growth forecast as reasonable. To put it in perspective, Bristol-Myers Squibb's own non-GAAP earnings per share guidance for this fiscal year, 2021, would imply 15.7% year-over-year growth at the midpoint. This kind of bottom line growth rationalizes the dividend growth acceleration I noted earlier. Moving over to the balance sheet, the financial position is good. While the company did take on a lot of debt to help fund the Celgene acquisition, they went into the acquisition with a fantastic balance sheet. The balance sheet simply deteriorated from an excellent level to a level that's good. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 1.28. There's currently no interest coverage ratio due to the skewing of income before taxes for the last fiscal year. Their interest coverage ratio in fiscal year 2018, the last full year before the Celgene acquisition, was over 30. So I suspect that once the increased earnings base normalizes against the higher interest expenses, the interest coverage ratio will be quite acceptable. Profitability is robust as it sits, but I suspect this will also look a lot better once things normalize. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 10.72% and annual return on equity of 16.07%. Both numbers would be a lot higher if not for the skewing of gap numbers for fiscal year 2020. Overall, I think Bristol-Myers Squibb is more investable than it's ever been. The healthy pipeline, blockbuster drug lineup, and recent acceleration of growth all offer a lot to like. And the company is protected by durable competitive advantages that include global economies of scale, R&D, IP, established sales relationships, and patents. Of course, there are risks to consider. Litigation, regulation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Revlimid's upcoming patent cliff is a material risk. There remains integration risk. Celgene has to offset the weaker balance sheet with a lot of cash flow and growth. The increased debt load also increases the company's exposure to interest rates and it limits future M&A opportunities. Any major changes to healthcare in the U.S., especially as it relates to drug pricing, would impact the business. And while the drug portfolio has strengthened and improved in breadth, the company remains concentrated around only a small handful of highly successful drugs. The pipeline has pressure on it to produce more blockbusters. With these risks known, I still think this looks like a great long-term investment. That view is reinforced by the stock's appealing valuation. The stock trades hands for a forward price to earnings ratio of 8.74 based on the midpoint of this fiscal year's non-GAAP earnings per share guidance. That is almost obscene in this market. The stock's price to sales ratio of 3.4 is well off of its own five-year average of 4.2. There's also the price to cash flow ratio at 10.6. It's less than half that of the stock's own five-year average price to cash flow ratio of 23.4. And the yield, as noted earlier, is higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7%. This dividend growth rate is actually slightly lower than what I've typically used for other biopharmaceutical stocks. Comparing this to the company's long-term earnings per share growth rate, the recent dividend raise, and CFRA's near-term earnings per share growth projection, it's downright conservative. But 
I see this cautious stance as appropriate. The big acquisition is still new, the balance sheet is suddenly levered up, and there's a patent cliff looming. It's certainly possible, if not likely, that the company will exceed this dividend growth rate, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $69.91. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all their future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates BMY as a three star stock with a fair value estimate of $68. CFRA rates BMY as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $72. I came out right in the middle this time around. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $69.97, which would indicate the stock is possibly 8% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Bristol-Myers Squibb Co. is a high-quality biopharmaceutical company with one of the best-selling products in its entire industry. Huge long-term demographic tailwinds blow its way, further bolstering their prospects. With a market beating dividend, accelerating dividend growth, a low payout ratio, more than a decade of dividend raises, and the potential that shares are 8% undervalued, this could be a rare deal in an expensive stock market. And now for a special news announcement. We put out a video on PetMed Express Inc. stock ticker PETS less than a month ago when the stock was less than $30 a share. That video highlighted this name as a beaten down idea for dividend growth investors to consider. Well, the stock exploded on June 2nd during a short squeeze, up almost 6 60% on the day. The stock is $46 a share as I speak. This is an example of why we're putting out so much quality content on compelling ideas for dividend growth investors. Not all of them will explode like this, but many can and some do. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon. And I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.